Joe Biden, y'all know he is the Democratic nominee. He got a very, very special surprise today. DJ, cue it up for today, us. Today, I am proud to endorse Joe Biden for President of the United States. The top elected Democrat in the U.S. is throwing her support behind her party's presumptive presidential nominee. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi called former Vice President Joe Biden the right man for the job, citing his work to rebuild the U.S. economy after the financial crisis, his efforts to pass the Affordable Care Act, and describing him as a leader who can take on the current pandemic. Joe. Oh. Well, I'm going to give this one to T-Streams first. T-Streams, do well, you think that by Nancy Pelosi coming out and getting behind Joe Biden today, do you think that it's going to help the quote-unquote Bernie bros and the people that are on the fence turn the corner from what we currently have in the White House? You just went Autobot on me. Uh oh <laughs> Levon started to do a transformer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Transformer. Can you can you hear me now, T Streams? I got you. I said, do you feel like um her endorsement is gonna help um the Bernie bros and anybody on the fence go ahead and jump on Biden's side to get the person that we currently have in the White House out? Yeah, I, I I think it will. Uh, despite you know you love her or hate her, you know she she is she is a very very influential person uh, when it comes down to the uh, you know when it comes down to the Democratic Party, as well as influential you know uh, in you know in America. Period. You know, so even if even if you don't like her, that influences you to do something. But I do think that uh, I think that it was a good, strong gesture, um, you know, with with Bernie backing him. I seen uh, I seen a, an extended infomercial with uh, uh, Barack Obama backing him or endorsing him. Then you got you got her, and so now you see you you see the 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 alignment of all the heavy hitters starting to get you know starting to get behind him. And uh, I think it's going to I, I think it's going to 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 do what it's supposed to do. I still think they need to up and push the rally to, you know, to to encourage people to to vote, to be prepared for any types of, uh, you know, alternate voting and things like that, because I just don't think that the uh, that the Republican Party is going to allow this to be an easy shoot as it as it should. I mean, when you think of Donald Trump winning for a second term you know mm. it just it just sort of sound unrealistic you know out of all the stuff that's going on right now yeah. so i don't think that you know i don't think that they're just going to allow that to shoot in you know they 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 up the campaign about you know about his little you know so-called mistress and the the the, mm. the stuff that was going on back in 93 or whatever mm -hmm. uh so so I, I still think that the Republicans have a have a hand to play that they're just waiting for the uh, for the right time to to do it so that they can try to get their aha moment. Um, but with Nancy Pelosi, I think that was a I think it was a, a good gesture. Mm -hmm. It's you know it's almost you know it's you know it is showing some type of unity behind him. Right. Uh, I do think she need to change her dentures, but you Man. know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Y'all do going to hell, man. Y'all got to in be more careful. In. <laughs> man, man, she, man she, she make she make too much dang money up there in Washington. Be talking like a mule, man. No. Hey, man, it, it 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 ain't the dentures the problem. It's that damn wig. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, she, she says she's an old Catholic grandma, so hey. you got to you gotta cut her a little slack. <laughs> Larry, as a matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and give it to you, Larry. Does does this help anyone who's on the fence about Joe Biden with her endorsement? I think it might. I'm not sure if it's going to, I don't think, it, I'm not sure if it's going to help with, um, with individual voters per se. Where I think it might help is with some of the with some of the the Democratic leadership if they had not fully gotten on board to endorse Joe Biden, I think that's where it might help. They'll, some of those people, some of the some of the state congressmen and women, some of the uh, some other congress, you know, some of the people from the House or the Senate or governors, they may now say yes, we are fully on board, 
And in turn, when those people make the endorsement, it may then help people, you know, the regular voters down the line say, okay, I think I'm going to go for Joe Biden. So Mm -hmm. it may help, but I don't think it's going to help directly. I think it's going to help more so with the leadership. And then those leaders may then help further down the line, sort of like trickle down uh, support. No, (laughs) I feel you. And the, the other the other political story we got for you guys in the news has been a lot about Kim Jong Un. Dennis mm. Rodman's favorite person overseas yep. being dead. He had, we haven't seen his little chubby face in about a month. That's right. Well, an interview was done today with South Korea's foreign policy administrator, a Moon Jae-in. As in Moon Jae-in like it's a damn hotel suite. He says, Kim Jong-un is alive and well. You guys have nothing to fear. Yeah. Larry, I'm going to give this one to you first. Is Kim Jong-un alive and well? And you know he loves a camera more than Donald Trump. No. He may be alive, Mm -hmm. but he's not well. And and, and alive is relative because, I mean, you could have a dude that's been dead for all intents and purposes for years, and they can have him on... You know, on life support where they're pumping his blood and, and breathing for him and everything else. So technically, he could be alive. But I mean, honestly, I don't think that he is. I think that if uh, I think that if he was alive and well, mm-hmm. that he would have made an appearance. They would have slapped his suit. They would have slapped his black suit on him. They would have they would have put a bowl over his head and, and cut around it. And then they would have put him out there and said, look, here he is. He's alive and well. They would have had him standing next to some tank or on the hill looking over some resort or or missile or something. (laughs) He would have waved for a few minutes and then he would have walked off and they would, and that would have been that people would have been like, okay, there's a sighting. He's alive, but he's not. I mean, they're talking about, they had to, they had to rush him over to China for, for medical treatment and his Mm -hmm. trains out there and dude's not okay. I mean, they, for the, from what I was reading somewhere was some I forgot which intelligence agency was saying that that he's basically in a vegetative state. So Damn. what it sounds to me like is that the dude had a heart attack and and now he's a vegetable. He had a heart attack. It probably took a while for him. I mean, I don't know where he was when he had it. It seems like maybe it took a little while to get him some medical care. As a consequence, he lost too much oxygen to his brain and now he's a vegetable. And so he may technically be alive but he's probably a vegetable. He's probably never going to recover. And, you know, so who knows? I mean, I'm not wishing anything ill on the dude. I know a lot of people are sending around a lot of funny memes and they're joking. Some people are saying, good, I hope he's dead. I'm not saying that because I don't want to wish any death on anybody. I just don't want that kind of bad mojo on me. So, but I, you know, I think that, I think North Korea is going to be a better place without him. We don't know because... I mean, there's some pretty bad people. There's some pretty bad characters in there. Some people say his sister, who's likely to take over, is even worse. And I can only imagine how ruthless you have to be to to rise to power underneath him as a woman. I mean, he mm. must have been scared to death of her. So, because otherwise, I can imagine he just would have killed her, just like he killed his brother. He just would have been like, no. Nah. So he must have been terrified of that woman. Mm. No. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think he's done. I think they'll play this. I think they'll play this game out for a little while until it's just until it's just undeniable, either until there's leaks of it out of China or something, and then they'll just have to acknowledge it. Yeah, he died, or maybe he got COVID or or something. Maybe they'll make up some story and then he'll go, and then there'll be a little bit of a struggle for power between his his family and the generals, you know. Maybe they'll maybe they'll be smart and the generals will take over and they'll talk to South Korea and say this could be a good opportunity for re- reunification, you know. So he streams. If yeah. if if he's if he's um, sick or on his deathbed, why is South Korea coming out pretending that he's still alive? What would be their motives? I don't know. The only. <clears throat> I don't know. The only th- only only thing I could see is that maybe you know maybe they're trying to to stage their own you know you know stage their own coup or something. Um, I I don't know. I if you 
you know, just knowing the guy since he's been in power since his dad died, um, he, you know, he's like, you know, he's like a, a, a young Donald. He's like a young Donald Trump, except he's a little bit smarter, but he's he has he he's wicked you know there's there's definitely a wicked streak there and then too he's always you know he's always in front of the camera for something you know for anything for everything he he's normally uh a photogenic type of guy ruler whatever he he wants the people to know that that he is the man in charge over there so uh I don't think I don't think he's dead. And if he if he is, you know, if he is, they're probably just trying to come up with a way to 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 release it, you know, to release that information, because you can almost rest assured that there's there would be probably some civil unrest there uh, once, you know, once it came out publicly, you know, because a lot of people love him out of fear. Mm hmm. Then you have the, the folks that wants to wants to trample them. Uh, then you you know you have the the, the deal with uh, South Korea, who you know who wouldn't mind you know uh, reasserting that territory. Mm -hmm. and so, mm -hmm. so so his you know his demise could could cause potential problems in you know three or four different areas. And so mm -hmm. that's probably not information that they can just sort of put out their happy-go-lucky uh, because it would put them in a vulnerable, you know, it would put them in a vulnerable state. Not to say that any any one country or something is just going to march up there and start shooting missiles and start doing this and doing that, but you, you know, you never you know, you really just never know what could happen with that information if it was made, if it was made public prematurely. Uh, right. So, you know, to, to go for a they they say a, a, a botched heart surgery. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know how much of a botched heart surgery one can have, but anything other than going into a, a, an accredited hospital with certified doctors to uh, to operate on an uh, organ as vital as the heart is uh, any to do anything otherwise is very foolish, especially for a world leader. Um, albeit if you if you won that's an ass anyway so um, <laughs> you should still have you know you should still have other things put you should still have other things put into place uh, I I don't think he's dead but he's he's definitely he's I'm I'm standing with Larry he's definitely not well because it's too much of this going on in the world and if he was a will he would be in the forefront like nah not over here right yeah i think he would have made an appearance even if yeah. it was just a limited one just to say hey i'm alive here i am just to put the rumors to rest i think he right. would have done that right so. Be before we jump to um the money financial section of this video i want to shout out my man howard mcquarters because of him and his super chat we will now have a money consumer finance section on my channel because of him and he requested it. Anytime you guys who chat with us often have some video requests, hit me in DM or Instagram or here. And we should care about what's going on in that region of the world because they are a nuclear power. Right. A nuclear right. power that's not supposed to be a nuclear power. Kim Jong-un, even though we don't like his tactics as a leader, he strikes fear in the region and kind of kept people at bay. And right. if he kicks the bucket and that sister don't know what she's doing or she's got beef with someone else, we could be talking about setting off a whole new world war. And nobody needs that with the guy we got in the White House right now. And, and here's the other thing, too, that a lot of people ha probably have. I mean, I'm sure that all the powers that be have thought about this, but I'm not sure the average person has thought about it so much is that if you if Kim Jong Un dies and the whole and there's a moment of there's a moment of 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 a sense of we're not afraid right now this is our opportunity you could have a massive massive refugee problem just across mm -hmm. the borders in in South Korea and on the other side in China where people are like this is our opportunity to get out 
you know, if the country, if the country's in turmoil and there's a power struggle and people are trying to figure out who's going to run this thing, a lot of people that have the opportunity to leave will get the F out. And you can literally see tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people fleeing that country. And then you're going to have a two sided, you know, you're going to have a refugee crisis on two different borders right in the middle of a global pandemic. I mean, it could be a, an absolute nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you're South Korea, what are you going to do? South Korea has has a policy similar to what we had with Cuba, whereas if you get here, we will not send you back. As long as you can find a way to get here, we'll keep you. So if you end up now all of a sudden where you have, you know, <laughs> tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of North Koreans fleeing across the border and South Korea is like, we're not going to send them back. They have to find a place to put them. They have to find a way to feed them. They have to find a way to house them and, and, and all that. And they have to make sure that they're healthy. You know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man, so go it, table it on that one, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and, and in case you forgot, we yeah. provide South Korea security. So when we wonder about oh, who cares if South Korea, just understand that could mean that the U.S. now has to send more troops right. to, to be stationed over there to provide security, because basically we are South Korea's military. For the most part, <laughs> I mean, basically volunteering for them because we ain't getting paid a whole lot for that. No. <laughs> Jeez, no. man.